Okay, people, we are finally here. I know this review is like super late. My computer was on the fritz for a while. I had to get it fixed. You can check out my latest video, my quick update to hear the full story. But now it's finally fixed, so let's review this movie. And since it's been out for a week and a half already, there might be some minor spoilers in this review. I'm not gonna spoil anything huge, of course. Just like maybe some little tiny things because I just have to nerd out and talk about them. So you've been warned about the tiny spoilers that really have nothing to do with the overall plot. And one more thing before I get started. I have one super important question for all of you. That question is... Is my beard as badass as Captain America's? Avengers Infinity War. So Avengers Infinity War is movie number 19 in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the seventh movie in its phase three is the third Avengers movie and this is a movie that we have been looking forward to for 10 years. One decade of Marvel Studios kicking ass. And in Avengers Infinity War, all our superheroes in the Marvel Cinematic Universe are scattered. The Avengers are broken up due to the events of Civil War. Some heroes are on Earth, some are not, some are here, some are there. And now, the mad titan Thanos, played by Josh Brolin, is on the hunt for the six Infinity Stones, which have been hinted at throughout the movies of the Marvel Cinematic Universe over the years. And it's all led up to this. Thanos is now going to go on his journey to try to collect the Infinity Stones. And the Avengers and other superheroes of the universe have to try to stop him. It's arguably the most anticipated movie of the year, and I'm so bummed that I was late on this. So, is this movie good? Um, yeah. Is it great? Um, yeah. I'm gonna start off this review with Josh Brolin as Thanos, because a lot of people are saying, oh, he's the best villain Marvel in the Cinematic Universe has ever had. I'll say he is a really good villain. He's probably one of the best. I wouldn't call him the best though, because there are some things about his character that misfire with me, I'm being honest. I mean, Josh Brolin gives a great performance. His acting is great. The CG on him is damn near perfect, probably as good as it's ever gonna look. But there were some things about him that did not impact me as emotionally or personally as other villains like Killmonger and Vulture had. Example, the directors, the Russo brothers, said that they were gonna try to make Thanos a sympathetic villain. You're gonna see why he is doing what he's doing, and you're gonna feel the emotion behind it, and you're gonna sympathize with him. I saw where he was coming from, I mean, he was wrong, but the example I'm trying to get to is Gamora. You know, Gamora is the adopted daughter of Thanos, and in this movie, you're supposed to buy that Thanos really cares for Gamora as his adoptive daughter, and I just never really bought that he ever cared about her. Like, he'll get emotional about shit concerning her, but, like, there's conflicting information in my head, because past movies have told me that Thanos is a douchebag, who abducted her from her home planet and turned her into a weapon, and forced her to fight against Nebula, you know, as they were growing up, and he was a dick to both of them. And now this movie's telling me that Thanos really cares deeply about Gamora? Uh... I'm not buying it. That being said, Josh Brolin conveys emotions very well, and he is a formidable opponent too. He goes toe-to-toe -to -toe against the Hulk in the beginning of the movie, and, well... Try to guess how that fight ends. Now, of course, there are a lot of characters in this movie. There are 22 heroes in total here. Not all of them are gonna get their huge screen time time to shine, but there were a few standouts to me. First and foremost of all is Mantis. She was such a badass in this movie. No, I'm kidding. Gamora actually has the most screen time out of all 22 of the main heroes in this movie, which makes absolute sense because she's the adopted daughter of Thanos. Her role in the movie is pretty important. So I applaud Zoe Zodana's performance. She was really good. Of course, Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man, he goes through a lot of emotional turmoil in this movie. And his his suit, like, he went through a major upgrade between movies. I mean, no, every single movie he has new upgrades to his suit, but, like, this is the most noticeable upgrade that I've seen since, like, the Mark 1 to the Mark 2. And, yeah, Tony Stark is the one who's like, yeah, Thanos has been in my head for the past six years. I've been living with this irrational fear in my head, and now it's finally come to fruition. So now he has to deal with that, and I really like how it's handled. Ten years later, Robert Downey Jr. has not lost it at all. He is still as committed as ever. I love that about him. He probably could have retired, like, two movies ago. I'm just saying. Thor sure has lost a lot in his life, hasn't he? He lost his mother, he lost his father, he's lost friends and loved ones, he's lost his home now, and you really feel the weight of it here. Thor has a pretty good story arc in this movie with Rocket and Groot, where they go to meet one other character. When you see this new character's face, you're like, oh my god, that actor is in this movie? It's one of those things. Here's another question for you. Why is Tom Holland's Spider-Man so much more badass in Marvel movies that aren't his? Seriously, in Civil War, he took on Falcon and Winter Soldier, two established powered people, and he webbed them up good. And then in his own Spider-Man Homecoming movie, he slipped up and made mistakes. And now in this movie, he gets the Iron Spider suit? Yeah, it is bad. Ass. I once again praise Tom Holland as Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. He owned the role. He's awesome. He's so good. Because again, he's still a kid and all this really just new, you know, alien space stuff he's dealing with now. He's making pop culture references, he's joking around, but at the same time he's so shocked by everything that's transpiring around him, just like he was in Civil War, and I liked it. So those were the real big standouts to me. Doctor Strange is also pretty important in this movie, and of course Vision and Scarlet Witch. They're officially a relationship in this movie, and Scarlet Witch's accent is completely gone. I'm fine with that. And I think everyone should be, because let's face it, her accent in Age of Ultron was 
horrible. So the accent was dialed back a bit in Civil War and now two years later, it's just completely gone. And Scarlet Witch is still a badass. I still love the hell out of her. She's a great character. She's got some really emotional scenes in this movie that I totally bought. Her and everyone else. There, like I said, there are a lot of characters in this movie. Some are here, some are there. This movie felt like Game of Thrones because it is a lot of juggling. You know, first we're over here for a good like 15 minutes and now we're over here in Wakanda and then here we're in space. But if you ask me, I'd say it was balanced pretty well. The quick tonal shifts between, for example, like a Guardians of the Galaxy vibe and like a Doctor Strange, Tony Stark, Spider-Man vibe. Those three characters are together. The tonal shifts didn't really bother me at all. They probably would bother me if the movie were shorter, but this is a two and a half hour movie. The longest Marvel Cinematic Universe movie to date, and that gives the movie time to squeeze in all these characters. One thing that did bother me about the movie, though, was the humor that was in there. Again, they did dial back the humor like Black Panther did, and thank God they did. And of course, there was some humor that made me laugh. Like, Tony Stark had a couple of lines, some references that he makes made me laugh out loud. They were hilarious. But for three movies now, Drax has only had one moment in all three movies that he's been in that's made me laugh out loud. And that's the moment where he was laughing at Star Lord and Guardians Volume 2. Drax had humorous moments in this movie that I saw coming from a mile away. He's not funny, at least not in my opinion. At this point, I just don't care about Drax at all. I care more about Mantis than I do about Drax, I'm being completely honest. Now, of course, in a movie called Avengers Infinity War, you're gonna have some badass action scenes. And yeah, there are, and I nerdgasmed out quite a bit when I saw this movie for the first time. I've seen this movie like three times at this point. But that's another thing about this movie is that it's really four Marvel fans that have kept up with all the movies up until this point. I mean, you'll still enjoy it if you're not caught up, but man, Man, I was freaking out at some of the moments in this movie. The action scenes, the character interaction moments. There is one super badass moment with Thor towards the end when he comes down to somewhere. It's like in the middle of this big action scene and Thor comes down and he's like, Rah! and he just does something. I was like, Oh! <laughs> it was like that. It, it really was. The writing was excellent with all the character interactions. You see characters meet each other and you just... You know, you've always wanted to wonder what it would be like if this character met this character. And it was awesome because these big personalities, they clash and you're just thoroughly entertained. What would happen if mouthy Tony Stark met mouthy Peter Quill? It's great stuff. That's where the laughs were. And of course, this being the third Avengers movie and the beginning of the end of the Marvel Cinematic Universe as we know it, there will be some emotional moments that bring the, well, not the waterworks, but you're like, Oh, that's so emotional. Oh my god, these characters I've known for so long. Oh my god, the ending. Holy mother of- For the first, like, couple of minutes after the credits started rolling, I was just sitting there in shock, letting it all sink in. I was like, I am now emotionally drained. And the movie ends on a really good cliffhanger. Alan Silvestri's score... <clears throat> Thank you. Alan Silvestri's score in this movie is really good. Coming from someone who actually really loves the score in Age of Ultron that was done by Brian Tyler and Danny Elfman, but I'm glad they brought back Alan Silvestri who scored Captain America the First Avenger and the First Avengers movie. The score in Infinity War was like an evolved version of the score from Avengers 1. You know, he brings back themes from Avengers 1. There's also a couple scenes where you hear musical cues from Black Panther, which, all right. If you're gonna bring back music from previous Marvel movies, don't just do one. I wanted to hear like Spider-Man's theme as bad as it is. All right, maybe not that one. Doctor Strange's theme though, I would have liked to have heard that. Or how about the Guardians of the Galaxy theme. Everyone knows that one, right? Ba, da, 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 da. Where was that in this movie? Yeah. I know it may feel like I didn't love this movie as much as I actually do love this movie because this movie is fucking amazing. I'm just getting all my nitpicks about it out there. This movie's not perfect, but no movie is. But I feel like Avengers Infinity War did the best job it possibly could at bringing all these characters together. All the acting was superb. The writing was fantastic. The action, the visual effects, they were all great. This movie has the action, it has the feels, and it has the ending that a lot of people are going to be talking about for the next year. Year. So, for Avengers Infinity War, I will say, Go see this movie right now! For the second or third time since you've probably seen it at least once already. And there is a post credit scene, there's no mid credit scene, just a scene after all the credits. Just letting you know. Again, sorry this video is so late, I got quite a few videos to make, uh, I gotta make a spoiler video about Avengers Infinity War. And I still wanna talk about the trailers for Venom and now Ant-Man and the Wasp, so I should have all those videos up in the next week and then Deadpool 2 is gonna come out and I'll be back on track. So, Avengers Infinity War, have you seen it yet? What did you think about it? No spoilers in the comments, please. Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe. I don't have a gauntlet here. I really should.